I started doing chelation therapy with the uh, American College of Advancement in Medicine. And then I heard about a new organization that was starting up right about that time. It was called A4M, which stands for the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. So around the you know, early 1990s when they started, so what are we talking about now? They've been doing it for uh, uh, 22 years already. And so actually I, I was doing it before they even started that organization, but that organization uh, was actually bigger than ACAM because now they were uh, throughout the world. Uh, they have uh, seminars uh, in many countries around the world all year long. And again, their focus, they call it anti-aging medicine, but before it was called anti-aging medicine, it was actually called functional medicine or preventive medicine. You know, the, the, the goal is always the same, to keep people healthy. If you keep people healthy, they live longer. And anti-aging medicine started off, though, and their approach was not chelation therapy, though. Their approach was using hormone replacement therapy, uh, bioidentical hormones for men and women, human growth hormone, uh, thyroid hormones, you know, in other words what they're saying is that the real cause of aging is a decline in hormone production and that's true as we get older all of us see a decline in hormone production and that is responsible for many of the symptoms we experience as we get older. What are those symptoms? Weight gain, high cholesterol, uh, high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer, well, why are we becoming susceptible to that? A decline in hormones. Not to mention the symptoms that people immediately face when their hormone levels decline. For example, in men, as the testosterone level declines, uh, they, the man's strength declines, uh, loss of libido, uh, the desire just to be as active as they used to. I mean, those are the symptoms. Now, mainstream medicine did never address those problems. They said, well, that's normal for getting older. What do you expect? And they would tell the women the same thing as their hormones declined and they comp uh, complained of hot flashes. Uh, the only difference is with the women, they were using hormone replacement, but not identical hormone replacement. They were using synthetic hormones. And, and the story behind that is very interesting. When women uh, f you know, first uh, complained of hot flashes, for example, uh, they knew that was a hormone issue. But the bigger issue was why were women seemingly, seemingly protected against heart disease and heart attacks compared to men of the same age. You know, in other words, you would see men in their 40s, for example, getting heart attacks, and it never happened in women. What was that all about? They said, well, that must be a hormonal protection. So they said, okay, so maybe it makes sense that for postmenopausal women, we'll give them back their hormones. And that's what they did. They gave women back estrogen. But it wasn't the bioidentical estrogen, it was the estrogen that they made in the, the pharmacy, the synthetic estrogens. And, well, it, it, it lowered the uh, incidence of heart attacks, but what they didn't expect is it increased the incidence of uh, uterine cancer. So now they had a problem on their hands. So well, we, we fixed one problem, we created another. They thought about it and they said, well, you know, we probably uh, made a mistake here because we didn't give the progesterone to balance out the estrogen. So they started giving women progesterone, but again, as mainstream medicine always does, they have to use a patented medicine, meaning uh, exactly that it's patented. It can't be um, uh, reproduced uh, or, or sold except by that one company because they have a patent on it. Now, how do you do that? If it's natural, you can't patent it. So they make up a, a variation of a natural hormone, but it's slightly different. So with the progesterone, they call it a progestin, and it's an important distinction because a progestin is never found in the human body. It's only a progesterone. So they gave the women estrogen, but it was again a, not a bioidentical estrogen, and they gave it a progestin. Well, the incidence of cancer went down, the uterine cancer incidence went down, but they lost the protective benefit on the heart disease. So, you know, th th this is you know, mainstream medicine's approach because they always want to uh, make the money on the drug. But around the same, well, going back, gee, earlier, uh, maybe back into the 70s, I think it could be, Dr. Jonathan Wright, you know, introduced the bioidentical hormones or recommended that they be used 
Uh, I think he coined the, the term uh, triestrogen, which is actually a combination of the three human estrogens found, uh, estriol, estradiol, and estrone, and he combined them with progesterone and, and testosterone and gave it to women with good results without any side effects because, again, you're giving the women what's natural to their body. It's not something that's totally unnatural, and you're giving it to them in a balanced form. In other words, you're not creating estrogen dominance like mainstream medicine did when they don't give progesterone. They'll tell women with hysterectomies, meaning they've lost their uterus, uh, you don't need progesterone because you don't have a uterus. But every cell in the body has receptors for not only estrogen but progesterone. You need to keep the two balanced. So it, it goes back quite a while. In fact, uh, when you listen to Jonathan Wright uh, speak, uh, he says it goes back to uh, thousands of years, back to China, when they were giving you know, the emperors there uh, hormone replacement therapy. Well, estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, and alpha are only hormones we have to be concerned about. Uh, thyroid hormone deficiency is very common, except it's uh, not recognized as often as it should be. Uh, a great book out there by Dr. Broda Barnes, MD, called Hypothyroidism, the Unsuspected Illness, uh, explains it in great detail why it's so important to pay attention to your thyroid. Like all the other hormones in the body, as we get older, our production declines. The trouble is, uh, particularly with thyroid, is we don't recognize the connection between a, a, a falling thyroid hormone level and the symptoms associated with it. One of the symptoms is um, high cholesterol. Another common symptom is depression. Uh, very common problems, but they're not treated with thyroid hormone replacement. They're treated with drugs. So patients would come to me with a, with a whole array of symptoms so from fatigue, uh, muscle pain, insomnia, cold intolerance, and you, you do all the tests on them, and all the tests are normal. So uh, the typ typical approach would be to give them Prozac or some other antidepressant saying, well, there's nothing wrong with you, just take this drug, it'll make you feel better. But if you investigate a little bit more, you realize that, and, and you look at historically how uh, thyroid disease was treated, you realize that they're really experiencing thyroid problems. Uh, the, the, the real problem with thyroid blood tests is that they're only measuring the circulating thyroid hormone levels in the blood. It does not reflect how those thyroid hormones are functioning in that person. And that's really a big problem because you can have the presence of thyroid hormones but they're not working as they should. There are a lot of reasons for that. Uh, one of the reasons uh, is the lack of iodine in everybody. You know, iodine is the essential nutrient required to make thyroid hormone levels. But we are exposed to far higher levels of chlorine, bromine, and, uh, and fluorine, or fluoride, than we are iodine. And those elements displace any iodine that might be in the body. So I, I think what's happening is the body is making these thyroid hormones incorporating the wrong nutrient not the iodine. So the hormones measure up on a blood test, but uh, they don't function as they should. So people can have uh, levels in the normal range, but still have the symptoms of hypothyroidism. So it's really a big problem. How do you know that you're treating a patient correctly? I mean, at the end of the day, I think that's the, the question that needs to be answered. If the patient gets better, you know you're doing a good job. And I think that's what we see over and over again. When patients come to our office, uh, maybe on uh, levothyroxine or Synthroid, which is uh, a, a synthetic uh, thyroid hormone. Uh, the levels on the blood tests look good, but they're still complaining of all the symptoms they experienced before. And you switch them over to a, uh, what we'll call a bioidentical uh, hormone combination of both T3 and T4, and they start to feel better. And it's no coincidence that we see this over and over again. I'm not saying that we automatically switch everybody over, only the ones that uh, are experiencing or are not getting better with the uh, synthetic uh, thyroid that will switch over to a bioidentical thyroid. Everybody should be evaluated, but a lot of people have symptoms of hormone imbalance, but they don't attribute their symptoms to it. You know, how many people feel great as they get older, uh, 
uh, is, you know, when I say older, you know, you're getting into your 40s and 50s, this is when the changes are more noticeable. Uh, some people do feel great and they don't notice anything, but if you're noticing symptoms, more likely than not, it's related to a, a decline in thyroid and uh, sex hormones.